the full day. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, July 5th. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed your Independence Day. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who is very quickly selling all of his Pac-12 stock, Dave McCann. Sell it. Sell it now while there's still some value to it. Uh, Things have changed so much in the last week, and we expect every time you pick up your phone and go to Twitter, you expect another change coming. We're going to talk about that today, but uh, wow. USC, UCLA out, and now all of a sudden, this vaunted Pac-12 looks like it may crumble like a house of cards. What seemed like it was going to be a quiet holiday weekend, of course, until the fireworks explode for, yeah. you know, endless hours. And by the way, everyone night. in Utah Valley last night, I believe, was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It was incredible. <laughs> but yeah, then uh, the Pac-12 uh, had some fireworks explode in Los Angeles, and things changed over the weekend. I mean, what a show lineup. Holy cow. What does the defection of USC and UCLA mean leaving the Pac-12 to join the Big Ten mean for the Big 12 and BYU and other college football Power 5 conferences as we push toward what looks like a very significant Power 2? Garen Emig in the heart of Big 12 country and a sports writer for the Tulsa World will rejoin the program to discuss what the Big 12 needs to do to maintain power and try and be the third best conference overall. Plus, it's top five Tuesday, and the top five BYU football wins of independence are on topic. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. USC UCLA leave for the Big Ten. Both teams will begin in the conference in 2024. Neither team's going to suffer financial penalties for leaving the Pac 12, as each has a grant of right agreement that's tied to a television deal, which is expiring by then. Wildcat Authority reporting. Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah will meet with the Big 12 today. We're going to dive into that in a big way here in a moment. Whoa. Can't wait for that amazing UCLA-Rutgers matchup. (laughs) Noon Eastern kickoff on the Big 10 Don't look past Maryland, USC. (laughs) On to some basketball news. Yoli Childs, former BYU great, has signed in Germany with the Hamburg Towers for the upcoming season. Yoli played for MHP Reason Ludwigsburg, another German team, in 2021, so he's staying in Deutschland. 14 Cougars land on the WCC All-Academic First Team. Not only are they good, they're smart. Yep. Cross country had the most first team members representing uh, BYU with four different athletes named. BYU also received 22 All-Amer- All-Academic Honorable Mentions. Boy, what a year. Well done. In the National Women's Soccer League, Michaela Clough for the Orlando Pride took two shots and 32 minutes of action on July 3rd in a Saturday 2-2 draw. The next match for Michaela Friday against the Houston Dash. Cameron Tucker also in action in the NWSL. Had one shot on goal and 45 minutes played for Gotham FC. They lost 3-0. Their next match, also July 8th against Racing Louisville. Yes, it's summer. BYU swimmers at the Bolivarian Games. Josue Dominguez wins the bronze in the 100-meter breaststroke. Fellow Cougar teammate Tony Fuertes placed eighth in the 100-meter butterfly. Both will compete later today. Dominguez in the 4x100 relief mix and Fuertes in the 200-meter men's butterfly. We wish them both the best. Hey, Josue is the real deal. Yeah. He competed in the Olympics uh, for Puerto Rico. He's really, really talented. Now for the Cougars in the minors. BYU baseball pitcher Bryce Robison pitched six shutout innings for the Yarmouth Dennis Red Sox. Now technically this isn't in the minors, but it's like a collegiate all-star summer league. Hey, the Cubs will take him. Sure. (laughs) Well said. (laughs) This team won 4-0 over the Orleans Firebirds. Robison struck out three batters, only allowed four hits. The team manager, Scott Pickler, said it was Bryce's best game of the summer season. Good for him. Hey, good things ahead. You're into BYU baseball. Perhaps yeah. this means good things for uh, Trent Pratt and company. I think if the entire Cougar roster went to Chicago and played, they'd have the same <laughs> record as the Cubs. That's, that's how that weekend went. It's been a rough season for yeah, the Cubs, really that's has. for sure. All rise and wow. shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Ford. Tim Daly, or part of the Tim Daly Outer Group, I should say, serving Utah since 1968. What a weekend. I mean, I finished the show on Thursday, and I thought, okay, a little 4th of July weekend, uh, countdown to the Big 12 is on, and then about 23 minutes after the show ended on Thursday, 
we saw a report from John Wilner of the San Jose Mercury News saying uh, it's an odds-on favorite that USC and UCLA are leaving for the Big Ten. And I thought, what in the world? It's, it's one thing to come from just a source, but John Wilner is in the heart of Pac-12 country. He is the Pac-12 right. guy. And so all these national writers hopped on and said, take this seriously. So we've had the weekend to process it. Yeah, Spec- but five hours later, the Big Ten voted oh, them in. Yes. Isn't that no, wild? It got, it got isn't, crazier. Isn't that wild? <laughs> <laughs> it became official later that day. I mean, the, the Pac-12 couldn't even get a Zoom call together before the Big Ten voted those two in. Speculation running rampant, oh, yeah. to say the least. I mean, anybody and everyone that feels like they have some sort of knowledge within the college football realm is offering their opinions about what the Pac-12 needs to do, who the Big Ten needs to add, does the SEC need to add more, what does this mean for the ACC and the Big 12? Well, this is BYU Sports Nation. BYU is headed to the Big 12, Dave. So our topic of conversation today is, in light of all of this madness, if you were the commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, Brett Yormark, what's up? Love to have you on the program anytime. Good luck. Welcome to the job. <laughs> if you were Brett Yormark and the commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, what is your next move to establish some solidarity? I'd call Bowlesby and, uh, and pick his brain on a few things, and he's still around, obviously, uh, the former outgoing commissioner. Uh, you, you're sitting at 12 teams because Texas and Oklahoma are leaving. Um, you can get to 16 and be like the other two mm-hmm. uh, or the other three for that matter, if you count in the ACC. So if you're going to add four, then you take four from the big sure. from the Pac-12. The, the Pac-12 is in big trouble, and everybody knows it. Um, even if they were to hold it together and go pick a Boise State and, and somebody else, you're replacing those with USC. There is no replacement. Yeah, how do you replace USC and UCLA? There's nobody in Los Angeles. There's nobody out there. There's nothing. Uh, and, and it's just a phone call. I remember... When uh, in, in the world of BYU and Utah fans, uh, when Oklahoma and Texas leave and BYU gets invited to the Big 12 because those two left, the battle cry from the rivals is, well, that league's nothing. You're losing your two bell cows, and now you're just a bunch of a misfits. Mm. And, and I remember talking to a few of them going, you know, you're one phone call away of having the same thing happen to you, although we didn't expect it. That phone call came, and, and now here it is, and now all of a sudden – you got a league that's on the on the verge of a legitimate collapse, and so which of those four teams do you take? You got to go with Oregon. You got to go Washington, and those two legislatures may make you take Washington State and Oregon State. And if you do that, those four come, and everybody else <laughs> is going to the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, we got governments involved in this. Yeah, it's the 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 Pac-12 will lose their P5 status, wow. whatever that status is anymore, but it's still something. This just in from Nicole Auerbach, who is a very talented college football writer and friend of the program. She said, Pac-12 statement. The Pac-12 board of directors met this morning, July 5th, and authorized the conference to immediately begin negotiations for its next media rights agreement. Yeah. They're trying to lock something in, Dave, so that they can maintain this Power 5 status. But yeah. what is Power 5? And, oh, do they wish they'd have done that last Monday. <sighs> we uh, need to compliment the Big 12. You know what? Because they could have stand pat. They were in this exact position last summer when they had eight teams remaining. And, and it was like, oh, man, does the Big 12 dissolve? They fortified the conference by going out, being aggressive, and adding four teams. And my goodness, in the words of Michael Scott from the office, my how the tables, or does he say, my how the turns tables, which makes no sense. <laughs> but the point is, things have shifted dramatically in a yeah. year. The Big 12 is in a position way more of uh, solidarity than certainly the Pac-12. And, yeah, that, no quite, no kidding, the Pac-12 wants to lock in media rights. They don't want to dissolve. Okay, so tell me right now. you got to vote right now. Give me four teams that you want in the Big 12 from the From Pac-12. the Pac-12? Yeah. Right, Oregon, Washington, Utah, and Colorado. What about the Arizona schools? I like the Arizona schools, but frankly, uh, with what Utah's done, I feel like Utah has earned more luster in the college football world than that of traditionally underperforming Arizona State and uh, Arizona, which has just an abysmal football program right now. They're why on the you, up and up. Why would you want Colorado? Well, ju- I, I wouldn't necessarily want Colorado. I just feel like... You just voted for them. Well, 16. Like, you're going to break up Arizona and Arizona State or Washington and Washington State, Oregon and Oregon State? If you could. Okay, so for me, it's like, do I want Colorado? Do I want Cal and Stanford? No. 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 So really, it's like, if you want to get an even 16, Colorado's the last team in in that 16. Or 
uh, you bring in the Arizona schools and Utah and Oregon and let Washington and Washington State fare for themselves in the Northwest. I I would take Oregon over Washington, but I feel like I want Utah in the Big 12 with BYU for that natural rivalry. I would like that. I would I would like that uh, just because it's so much fun, and then we won't have to argue whether or not they should play every year. Yes, they just, it just you know, happens. It happens. I mean, and it might be Thanksgiving weekend of all weekends. <laughs> um, and then everyone will go, we do need this game. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's interesting how – the ebb and flow of things. Utah's solidified in the Pac-12. I don't know if we need BYU. BYU solidified in the Big 12. Watching what's going on over here. I, I don't know if we need. You. Yeah, we both need each other in the in the world of entertainment sure. that we're in. But um, but it just it it comes down to uh, if Oregon and Oregon's got to feel like they're really hosed here because USC that their buddy didn't even call them. Um, USC and UCLA just left. And there was some uh, mention in a national article this week, uh, this morning even, I think it was Pete Thamel that said, you know, if, if USC wanted Oregon and Washington in the Big Ten with them, they would have went with them as opposed to being surprised that they left. So if you're Oregon and you believe you're a national power um, and you got Phil Knight who has shoe deals with all, all the members of the, of the world uh, and you're going, what are we going to do? Are we going to them? Are we going to merge with the Mountain West Conference? We have to get to the Big Ten. Well, the Big Ten wants Notre Dame and nobody else. And if they can't get Notre Dame, they're not going to add another team. At least not in the you know, immediate future, right? Yeah, and Notre Dame is Notre Dame. They're just going to kind of think this through. Um, everyone else is kind of panicking. It's like, uh, it's like we learned in COVID. There isn't a toilet paper shortage <laughs> until you make one. <laughs> It's like, I don't know, let's go by. Go to Costco. And, and like all over the weekend, up. it's like, if the Big 12 doesn't add four teams by Tuesday, they're dead. If the Pac-12 doesn't this, they're, and the Mountain West has got to be going, we, we might be dead if, if someone comes over and grabs four of our teams, or maybe just the one, Boise State, uh, and, and, and everything's moving to our Super League or whatever. What about Utah State and all those schools? I mean, they're, they're fighting for relevance to begin with. And and if the Pac-12 says, you know what, we're going to try to, we're going to try to hold it together. We're going to take four of their teams. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I mean, the the trickle down down in the weeds is is devastating. Up high in the Big Ten, they're just going, oh yeah, we just we just got Los Angeles. Life is good at the top. We're fine. What's what's everybody? We might not add another team. It's no big deal. We got 16. That's a good working number. So. But down here is where, where the panic is. Yes. Okay, there are so many moving parts to this. And the question we asked again was, if you were Big 12 Conference Commissioner, what's your next move? Dave, you asked me what four teams I would add. Yeah, ideally, Oregon, Utah, and then uh, Oregon, Washington, Utah, and Arizona State. But I, I don't know if that makes – I don't know if they're going to break up the Arizona schools. I guess the realistic – notion of that seems very very unlikely that's why i went with utah and colorado if you're if you're arizona state and arizona and you you can choose from the mountain west or oh one yeah of, no they'll go to the big you, 12 or one of you goes to the big 12 do you both go to the mountain west or does one go you know what i love you but i'm leaving utah and byu we thought were connected sure. to the hip for a long time when the pac-12 called the utes are like uh it's been great We'll see you later. Yeah. And then BYU's like, well, we're not staying here. We're going independent. And then that's how they got out of, out of the Mountain West. So those relationships are really, really good right up until they're based on survival. Yes. And so maybe they're not as solid. Maybe Oregon could come without Oregon State. The Big 12, uh, again, because they're in a very unique position, we feel like they are the third best conference in terms of TV rights negotiating power. That is what this is all about is – Getting the Big 12 to a point where they feel strong enough to go and negotiate their new TV rights deal and be like, yes, we are solidly the third strongest conference. What's going to get the Big 12 to that point? Certainly Washington and Oregon would help. Utah would help. Arizona and Arizona State, if you count TV markets, which I feel like are kind of a dying brand now yeah. because streaming rights and – Everything's easy to watch. Colorado, the country. The Denver, the Denver they, they the don't Den watch Colorado. No, they They're watch the pro. That's a pro sports town. Yeah. They watch their professional teams. They watch the Avalanche. You just won the Stanley Cup. And Northern California doesn't even know Cal and Stanford are actually over there. They watch the Broncos and the Nuggets and the Rockies. Yeah, Denver is not a college sports town. No. Uh, Salt Lake City's market is very different. Uh, Eugene, Oregon, very much a college sports town, right? right? Uh, so uh, how do you get to a point of power? Well, yeah, you add the the most lucrative potential 
members of the Pac-12 left over. Will they do that? Uh, and, and how long do you wait? The Big 12 was smart to be aggressive when Texas and Oklahoma left, and they were. So do you get do you get super aggressive and go for 18 teams, Dave? No, I think you go 16. You, try, you stick at 16? And you, and you just we just read that, that the Pac-12 is doing a – trying to get a media deal you know that's a panic situation of like no 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 we'll get something don't leave what Please what leave. what tv partner me and media of- rights are going to come and be like yeah let's sign up with the pac-12 right now like is there somebody out there that's like let's buy the stock super <laughs> low and hope it goes high look the guys at the live tour are going sweet this is another opportunity for us to add a product that no one can find oh my goodness uh this is a this is a very interesting move but it's a panic move and i think they know they if they don't do it now, maybe by the end of the day, by the end of the week, uh, there, there only won't be a Pac-12. Well, much more on this conversation coming up in about 30 minutes, including a poll from the Kansas City Star asking which Pac-12 schools you'd want to see from the Big 12. Interesting responses coming up there. Yeah. Also, uh, a quote from Pete Thamel, who has put out a really, really good article this morning uh, with ESPN about – the Big 12 being in that position of third place, essentially. So much more on that. 30 minutes, loaded show. But we've got to fit somewhere in this, Dave. The countdown. Hit it. Countdown to the Big 12. 361. I'm solo on it today, and no shame. No shame, baby. 361 days. Allergies are keeping me Listen, you, you had your singing voice out loud and proud at Stadium of Fire on yeah. Saturday night, so you got to rest the vocals Listen, to a degree. Listen, the backside of the 4th of July is the NFL camps open up in a few weeks. It's now football, and it, and it's football right until the games are turning. And then, and then next, as we sit here next, next July, it's, we'll already know who BYU's opening up with in the Big 12. Uh, and it won't be 14 or 16 teams <laughs> next year in time. It'll, and Texas and Oklahoma will still be in it. It'll be 14 teams next year. It'll be 14 year. teams. So we'll already know that schedule. And, and the march will, will continue on into in, – in, in really still the best thing that's ever happened to BYU sports is this invitation Man. to the Big 12. Even though, you know, today it's like, well, what, what does that mean? What is the Big 12 what two is, years from now? Is it the Big 16? Yeah. And will all these academic guys just go, we're not the Big Ten, we're the Big 16. Yes. Let's just change our name. Can we get rid of the numbers altogether? If it's just called the Southwest Conference for crying out loud. Well, that's old school. You go back. back to go back school. to it. Back when times were simpler. Yes, our question of the day. If you were the commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, what's your next move? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response in from Austin Larson on Twitter. Quote, the best options available are Oregon and Washington. Gauge their interest and after that, prioritize Utah and Arizona State. The most likely scenario, Austin says, is getting Utah, Colorado, Arizona State, and Arizona, but reaching out to Oregon and Washington couldn't hurt. Here's my issue with Oregon and Washington on this note. It feels like theirs is a temporary love interest with the Big 12. Where it's like, yeah, we'll join that conference for a few years to be the to like solidify our status a little bit better, but ultimately we want to go to the Big Ten. So is it like a, a trampoline two-year relationship with the Big 12 before they hopefully get into the Big Ten and get more money? Like I, I don't feel like Oregon and Washington want to be in the Big 12 unless they absolutely have to for a very short amount of time. Yeah, could be. This is a bad, it's like, it's like uh, you just broke up with your girlfriend and you're looking for a quick bounce back, ultimately hoping to get to your dream girl, which is the Big Ten, right? That's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> if right. I'm Washington, I just got to figure out how to start winning some games again, so that I can. True that. I'm I'm on Oregon's coattail in this conversation to begin with because they've been so bad lately. Um, what an interesting time. Send in your responses. Hashtag BYOS on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, will Puka Nakua be a top 20 receiver this year in college football? Somebody thinks so. Plus, Garen Emig of the Tulsa World joins us to discuss. What is the next move for the Big 12? What do they have to do to solidify their position and maintain power status? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV 
to a range of pickups including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From personal injury to business law and from adoption to bankruptcy, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this or this and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews by subscribing to and share the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel. Welcome back to the show, loaded Tuesday edition. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Dave McCann, joining us now. Returning to the program is a columnist for the Tulsa World College Football Insider, Garen Emig. Garen, welcome back to the show. Happy belated Independence Day. Thank you, and same to you. Hope everyone took good care and enjoyed themselves. I hope the weather's more uh, tolerable <laughs> where you are than it is here in, in Tulsa. Yeah, thankfully, low humidity in the Rocky Mountain area. <laughs> we don't take that for granted. And certainly, with fireworks going off all weekend, uh, the proverbial fireworks in the college football realignment world were resounding. And we're just yeah. trying to wrap our heads around what all of this means, specifically for the Big 12 and for a team like BYU who's set to join the Big 12 next year. Just walk us through your initial reaction to the shockwave put out in the world by USC and right. UCLA joining the Big 10. Well, it wasn't the freak out of a year ago because that that directly involved uh, Oklahoma and the Big 12 with uh, the Sooners in Texas, you know, that that uh, grenade going off with them and the SEC. That sort of, I guess, maybe prepared people for, for the next seismic quake and uh, might have reined in some of the reaction on, on Thursday. But it, it was substantial. It is going to be substantial. This obviously doesn't end with the Trojans and Bruins going from the pack to the to the Big Ten. All eyes, uh, I think, are focused on Notre Dame nationally and, and, and the possibility that, that they're going to be involved in, in some kind of a maneuver next. But it does trickle back to the Big 12, trickles back uh, in particular around here to Oklahoma State. Cowboys and that conference had just sort of, I think, steadied themselves in the wake of Oklahoma and Texas. In fact, uh, AD Athletic Director Chad Weiberg at OSU uh, put it to me just several weeks ago at Big 12 spring meetings that, he feels that, that he can finally play a little offense after being on defense the past 11 months. And he says that, and then you turn around and you get, you know, you get this news. And now I think everyone uh, in big 12 country and certainly at, at Oklahoma state are, are pivoting back to a little defensive posture and I, and who's to blame them given what happened. So it's, it's, it's uncomfortable again, I think would be the best term. Yeah. Garen, if you're advising the new commissioner of the big 12, what do you want him to do? be as proactive as possible and that's not going to be easy uh this is a this is a guy in brett yormark whose name did not register with people when news broke that he was going to replace bob bullsby you had to have no you had to have been a new jersey nets fan to even know who this guy was <laughs> and that's literal right because the yeah. guy ran the ran the nets for 14 years or, or one of the properties he comes from Rock Nation. That's we we associate that with with music and entertainment, not yeah. so much sports. They have a sports wing, but 
he's all of a sudden entrusted with seeing the conference through at a time where he's just getting to know the lay of the land. And again, I use the word uncomfortable. I mean, that, that can't make anyone feel real steady about the Big 12. That's not your Mark's fault. This is just what he has inherited. So it, it will be fascinating to see how he reacts and how quickly he gets, gets himself stabilized. The most popular four teams out there, which are kind of circulating for whatever reason, we've seen Brett McMurphy talk about it and uh, an Arizona uh, entity talk about it, but that adding Arizona State, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado seem like the most logical, geographic, competitive right. fit. What would that do for the Big 12 if indeed your mark as the commissioner moves forward with that and they add those four teams? stabilizes the conference look though you bring in a, a foursome like that that's not enough i don't think uh, there the big 12 would call itself probably <laughs> as we, we we sort of readjust our terms for this the big 12 and that version of it would probably call itself a, a power third right yeah, after yeah. the sec after the sec in the big 10 truth is it wouldn't be it just I mean, that's that's how much the separation has been established between those two leagues and everybody else. And the, and again, the only school that I think changes that dynamic is Notre Dame. Uh, if for some reason the Irish uh, were to, to not join the Big Ten, but to join sort of a, a, a league that we're not even envisioning right now, well, then maybe the landscape changes. So you're not looking to you're looking to keep up the, as best you can if you're the Big 12 or the ACC or the PAC with the other two, but, but the, the reality is you're not going to. So what you're trying to do is stabilize. You're trying to get yourself as as sweet a new media rights deal in 2025 if you're the Big 12 as, as you can. Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado, besides making the most geographic sense, not that that means anything anymore. Right. We're talking about We're talking about the same conference that's had West Virginia, for goodness sake, out there on an island for 10 years. It makes sense geographically, but more than anything, I think it, it stabilizes the league longer term financially with, with regard to media rights revenue. Is that more important than getting Oregon into the into the Big 12 is to taking those four and stabilize? Or if you get Oregon and maybe Washington, uh, would that give them enough to be a little bit closer to the power two? I think so, just because... Uh, just this morning, fellas, I was doing some sports media watch research at, at some of the TV numbers uh, from la this past season since we've been we've been conditioned to see this in terms of, again, media rights contracts. And if you're going to condition yourself to think that way, you really need to go into viewership. I know I know people throw around the term brand a lot, and that I think that matters, especially when it comes to something like Notre Dame. But what you're really looking for is what football programs bring in the biggest viewerships and uh, a quick review of even last year where Oregon didn't have a vintage season show that the Ducks did did quite well. And and that didn't just go for their bowl game against Oklahoma, sure. but uh, in the regular season. So, yeah, I mean, well, if you bring in Oregon and Washington, maybe along with the four schools from the pack that we just mentioned, now you're really talking more about a merger, aren't we? Than, than a consolidation of, you know, of the big 12s power. This is, that's more of a merger. And maybe the two leagues go that route, right? Maybe your Mark and George Klyovkov, work out some kind of a deal this is cutthroat i doubt that happens but uh if you're talking merger and not so much consolidation then i then i think it sets you up longer term for more revenue opportunities whether that happens i, I don't know i i really have no idea now what some big 12 fans are worried about specifically byu fans are that maybe the big 12 gets poached from and the big 10 or the sec come after a team like oklahoma state or baylor what do you feel like is going to happen? And it, should there be concern that the Big 12 is going to be poached from, or do you feel like they're kind of good where they are? I don't blame people for being concerned because this is, a, again, a this is a, a backstabbing, this has become a backstabbing business, and that's no more personified than what happened Thursday. We were, we were led to believe that there was some kind of alliance, right, between these three <laughs> non-Power 2 conferences. Well, that, yeah, right. It I mean, was short-lived. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it really, you laugh, it's a joke. So um, it's right, that's right. So you, sh yeah, if you're, if you're uh, Brett Yormark, if you're, uh, if you're uh, George Klayovkov, if you're Jim Phillips, uh, you're all, you're all three concerned about who's doing what behind my back, who's doing what without my knowledge. And so um, the other thing is, if again, just to, 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 to boil this down to individual schools. I mean, if you're Chad Weiberg and Casey Shrum, the athletic director and president at Oklahoma State, 
and this has just happened, and you know the trickle and the and the uh, the rumble is coming your way from what happened, you you better review all options. And if your option is better served by you seeking a new home outside of the Big 12 and the PAC or some kind of a merger or consolidation, i.e. SEC, you take advantage of the opportunity. Do I have do I have any idea that the SEC would be more interested in Oklahoma State now than it was last Thursday before USC and UCLA happened? I have no idea. But if I'm Oklahoma State, I'm I'm working the phone lines to try to figure that out right now. Sure. Garen E. Meg with the Tulsa World columnist there. Uh, we're now in the mode of everything needs to happen lightning fast. So uh, if teams aren't announced by the end of today uh, or the end of the week, people will be thinking that my guy's not doing anything or or we're just going right. to be left to the curve. What, what, what kind of speed do you see happening even through today where there's report of conversations going on between schools mm -hmm. and, and the Big 12? What, what's, what's the timeline? Yeah, that's kind of a relative question. It's a good question, but it's relative because uh, we're conditioned for there to be a quick counter-strike, at least around the Big 12. After Texas and Oklahoma left for the SEC late last summer, it didn't take Bob Bullsby very long to pivot and raid the American for their three biggest brands, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF, as well as the addition of, of, of Brigham Young. And so that, but I don't know if that's, that was sort of a, you know, I've got to do something in the aftermath of losing 50% of my media rights value, which is what the percentage was thought to be at the time. I don't know if in this instance you can operate with, with that kind of timeline uh, in your, in your hip pocket. I, I just, unless people knew more than what they've let on uh, there, there was so much of an off guard uh, to, to what happened Thursday that it, it's, it's probably going to take some time for, those phone calls to be made, those contacts to be made, and I don't, I just don't think something like this comes together uh, that fast, especially if, you, especially if you have a, a Power Five rating another Power Five, right? Uh, in the case of what OU, what the Big Twelve did with the American and BYU, well, that, you know, that that wasn't Power Five on Power Five, it was Power Five on Group of Five in the case of the of the AAC. So we'll see. Uh, is is I guess my two word answer in terms of timeline. I think everyone would feel better because of the discomfort and the and the the distrust right now if this thing moved quickly. But um, there's a lot of mechanisms in place that have to uh, to have to you know oil themselves out for for that to occur. Garen, great stuff, and and really again, it all comes down to just trying to get within that huge financial gap that we learned uh, with the Big Ten and SEC teams are going to be expecting over a hundred million dollars per school yeah. and their new yeah. TV rights. And the other three power fives are right around 35 or 40 million. And so, it, yeah, it's just a race to try and close that gap. But is it an exercise in futility at this point? Yes. Yeah, it is. That's right. No, I mean, if, if you're, if you're going about this, if you're, if you're the big 12 or the pack and you're going about this, well, well, again, how do we join their ranks? You're not, uh, you're not e dealing in reality. You're not going to join those ranks that, that, Pardon the cliche, but that die has been cast. Okay, there's all there, and, I, and this is assuming that. Well, like the only thing that could, the only thing that could that could, I guess, call it that die is if we uh, we we're not privy to media rights money that doesn't that we we're not accustomed to seeing. But if this is not just a consolidation of those two conferences, but the two the two networks that show those games, ESPN and Fox, right? I mean, yeah. there, there's only so mu there's only so much more money they're going to want to spend. So now you're asking. Things you're asking NBC, you're asking CBS, you're asking streaming services like Apple and Amazon to get involved, and maybe they do, and maybe they have more billions to throw around than we think. But uh, I, if you're looking, if you're looking to join those ranks uh, and, and and close those ranks, I don't, I don't think that's uh, that's a realistic option. You're just doing, you're just trying to do the best you can for yourself and and to stay in in the in healthiest and richest business that you can. Wow, what a world in the realignment of college football. Garen Emig of the Tulsa World, great stuff. Uh, how do BYU fans and college football fans find more of your material? Well, you got to spell my name, first of all, correctly. You've done me a favor putting it on screen. It's uh, G Garen, G-U-E-R-I-N, Emig, E-M-I-G. That's the Twitter handle. Uh, check me out uh, on social media there. Uh, and then at TulsaWorld.com, sports. Okay. It's uh Pretty easy to pretty easy to do. Uh, bless you for any uh, any hits this generates. Keeps me in business a little longer. Hey, and fantastic. I appreciate I appreciate 
Anytime you need me, I'm here for you. I enjoy uh, doing this stuff. We got it. Spelling right included. Uh, go and follow him on Twitter <laughs> and read more of his material. Great stuff. Garen, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Coming up here on Sports Nation, more on what's your next move in the Big 12 Conference. Good. Some fresh news coming in from Dennis Dodd. Yeah, we got polls, all sorts of stuff to discuss. Quite a day. And is BYU Athletics a top 10 brand in college sports? If not, shouldn't they be? This is BYU Sports Nation. support to those that go the extra mile for all of us supplying products training and service for generations learn more at bradyindustries.com Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always. And get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Summer is back, and that means BYU TV's Super Girls of Summer are too. And they're more super than ever. Brave, persistent, bold, and heroic. Be there for all the fun, the action, and the reactions. Figured out how to make your world a better place. I totally feel like Superwoman. Watch the Super Girls of Summer all season long on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Dave McCann. I am Spencer Linton. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. College football wrap-up. Predicts an 8-4 season for BYU with losses to Baylor, Oregon, Notre Dame, and Boise State. Okay. Which of those four teams is BYU least likely to lose to? Least likely to lose to of those four. I'm going with Baylor just because BYU typically is really good early in the season, Dave, especially against Power 5 competition. With this team, vengeance on the mind. Baylor's coming to Provo. They're not going to be the same roster that were the Sugar Bowl champions. I like Baylor to lose to BYU. I agree, and I think Boise State loses to BYU as well. Up on the blue. Yeah. That, uh, the, what happened on the blue last time? That's true. That could happen again. I think and BYU remembers what happened at Lavelle Edwards Stadium last Indeed. fall with some fumbles. The Vengeance Tour. Let's go. Yeah. Puka Nakua is ranked 20th among all college football wide receivers, according to Mike Farrell's top 50 wide receivers heading into the 2022 season. Where will he end this season ranked? All right, I've got some blue goggles on, but if Jaron Hall stays healthy, Puka will end in the top 10. Ooh, He's going to okay. catch deep balls. He's a, an exceptional talent. He also knows this is his year to kind of position for the NFL if he's going to go out early. Sure. A healthy Jaron Hall, a healthy Puka Nakua puts Puka in the top 10. Yeah, uh, I like him top 20 for sure. I think he's definitely earned that. I'd say top 15. If he has a huge year, sure, why not top 10? Yeah, you got to get, get a lot of balls thrown to you. He doesn't drop many. He doesn't drop. No, he goes back and gets a lot of them, That's too. That's going to be something. All right, Big Game Boomer ranks BYU as the 16th overall most valuable brand in college sports. Are you pleased where BYU ranks on this list, or do you think they're being slighted? Should they be no, a little higher? I think this is fantastic. If you're a top 16 brand overall in all of college sports, this is why BYU is an attractive partner in the Big 12. This is why they're in the Power 5 conversation. 
It's not just about football. It's his overall college brand rankings and brand rankings sell advertisers and advertising increases the money that's involved in TV, television, or th- those rights agreements. So, yeah, I, I feel like this is this is great. Hey, and look who, who, look who they're ahead of. Exactly. Michigan State, Arkansas, USC's at 22. The vaunted USC that just joined the Big Ten. Ahead of Washington, ahead of Clemson, ahead of Miami, Wisconsin, Oklahoma State. Like, no, I'm not, I don't feel slighted at all. I think this is great. That's good stuff. Joey Chestnut. We can't do a post-July 4th show without mentioning the hot dog eating king. It Joey Chestnut. with your shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. America. 15 <laughs> straight Nathan's 4th of July hot dog eating contest championships. He threw down 63 hot dogs in 10 minutes, Dave. <laughs> How many hot dogs could you eat in 10 minutes? Two. <laughs> Two because it, they got to have the ketchup and the mustard, and it's got to be an experience. You want to enjoy it's it? Not just ramming them down like he does. <laughs> two, Water. and if, if I got to three, I would, I would, I wouldn't make it. So I'd go two in 10 minutes. How about you? Man, if I were pushing myself, like legitimately pushing myself, I, I guess I'd probably eat about, I don't know, eight. But I'd, I'd be so sick after. I don't want to do that. No. I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that to future hot dogs that you're going to eat down the road. Because after eight, you probably won't eat another one Exa- the rest of your life. <laughs> eight to ten tops for Think me. Think of the big picture. There's a lot of baseball games where you go, Man, I want to have a hot dog. Mm-hmm. Coming up, our top five wins over USC and UCLA for Top 5 Tuesday. Very appropriate. And as promised, some updated news from the Big 12 plans, according to CBS's Dennis Dodd. Don't go anywhere. Things are happening by the second. Just stand by. This is BYU Sports Nation. luxurious blanket getting cozy with family and friends a gift for everyone minky couture official luxury blanket of byu athletics my name is spencer finnegan i'm from st louis missouri during my sophomore year i got married to my sweetheart mary and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage we were looking for scholarships i found the replenishment grant and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Follow the ups and downs of elite young gymnasts in an exclusive behind the scenes look as they twist, flip, and bounce their way to the podium. See the commitment, effort, and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV, or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us Friday for a BYU SN special as we look back at one of the greatest seasons in BYU football, the Reviewables 1983 with Steve Young. Watch and listen Friday at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio with the holiday yesterday. It's Tuesday. The week's practically over. A team finished number seven overall highest ranking to date until the next year when BYU finished number one but they got one upped yeah a huge case so that 83 team really helped jump start that 84 campaign Steve Young reminds us of that all the time <laughs> shocker <laughs> <laughs> we love Steve welcome back to BYU Sports Station live from Studio B alongside Dave McCann I am Spencer Linton as promised more Big 12 news this just in from Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports he says and I quote the Big 12 
is involved in deep discussions to add multiple Pac-12 programs as a way to shore up its membership in the wake of the USC and UCLA defection to the Big Ten, sources tell CBS Sports. He continues, at least four teams are being considered with the potential for the Big 12 to add more as realignment continues to shake out. Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah were mentioned specifically as the teams being targeted by the Big 12. Again, sources tell CBS Sports. There is also consideration of adding Oregon and Washington to make the Big 12 an 18-team league, the largest in FBS. A merger of the Big 12 and Pac-12 in some form is also a possibility. Everything is on the table, said one Big 12 source. There is no question the Big 12 has to be aggressive in expansion, another conference source said. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if they do get six teams. That would be good news for Utah. That would mean they would have a place to go and not be left abandoned. Uh, And then it would also mean that Oregon and Washington would come because if you take six and you don't take those two, you're not not doing that. Um, And... uh, 18-team league is, you know, the 16-team WAC didn't work years ago, but those were WAC teams. These are P5 teams, if there's such a thing anymore. Um, Go to 18 if you want to, you know, wave the flag of, hey, we're the biggest. That makes us number three. If that gets you a few more bucks, so be it. Hey, if you you had Oregon and Washington and those four other teams, if you had six Pac-12 teams, including Oregon, Washington, and Utah, and Arizona State for that matter, there's some value there because there's a huge alumni base at Arizona State. Okay, It's just, it is what it is. Now we're talking about, okay, now you got some pieces to move around and be like, look, we're covering everywhere from the Northwest all the way down to Orlando, Florida. Okay. Again, we should just call it the Southwest Conference plus UCF at that point, right? right? Yeah. Now, now you've got some negotiating power. Now we're talking about, I think, like you get fifty to sixty million per school because it's such a vast conference, and there are some notable brands in there. But the idea that another conference is going to get to a hundred million plus per school, like the Big Ten and SEC, is no. That's just not happening. Well, if, yeah, and Big Ten, if they have sixteen teams, like they're going to have now, their TV deal has to be more than a billion dollars. Yeah, and what it's happens be if 1. they get, six billion. What happens if they get Notre Dame? How much more lucrative does that conference become? Here's the thing: there's not that much money. Uh, these TV networks are forking it out big time for the NFL and everything else. Eventually, like we heard earlier, you turn around, you go, you know what? We're out of money for college sports. Saturday afternoon isn't gonna. We're not just gonna keep printing money to have a game on. Is that Saturday when you call afternoon. Jeff Bezos at Amazon? And be like, hey, you want to just? Do you want to be the main just, provider yeah. for this streaming Elon rights Musk, provider? You just want to be uh, like CBS. CBS telling the SEC, you know what? You're asking for too much. We're out. We can't and, afford and that. The ESPN comes in and says we're in, and so that CBS had had the SEC forever. And after next year, they're moving on to something else. Does CBS come over to the Big Twelve? They've got an afternoon window, but what they're not going to do is go, look, we're paying for the PGA, we're paying for Super Bowls, we're not going to pay that. And um, so eventually it's going to run out of money. Man. So I, I don't, I don't, this Big Ten thing, half the Big Ten teams aren't any good. You know, we, we looked through the list today. Two of the 13 teams in the Big Ten and the SEC finished the season in the top 25. So the lower 13... Uh, just you draw a line between the elite six and those two. Go make a 12-team conference and, <laughs> <laughs> and have, a, have at it. But um, it's just th- these conglomerates are interesting. But, and so if the Big 12 goes yes. to 18, like we're hearing, that, that would, be, now, that would yeah. be our conglomerate. Yes, if you go to 18, including Oregon and Washington, now we're talking. Now we're moving in the right direction. I saw a report over the weekend, and I, I, there was a line in the article that jumped out at me as they were talking about what the Pac-12 is going to do just to try to survive, and it doesn't look like they will. Uh, and, and they were referencing BYU, and they said, well, BYU's off the table. And I sat there and I thought, how good is that for Cougar fans? BYU was on the table for the 40 table. years. Abandoned off to the side, and now BYU's where they want to be. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and here comes all this stuff, and it's a totally different feeling for BYU fans. Let's just say the Cougars are still independent. They didn't get invited to the Big 12. This is happening. The battle cry around Cougar Nation would be, are we going to continue sports? Yeah. Does this shut us down? Are we out for good? Uh, but it's just the opposite because the call came last year. Thank you, Texas. Let's go. Yes. And, and now BYU is off the table for a conference that uh, is taking on water. I, I love this from Pete Thamel, okay? 
uh, and he sums this up perfectly as to what is actually happening. To quote him, he says, what's unfolding in those three leagues, specifically the Pac-12, the Big 12, and the ACC is the quintessential college sports scenario where members are pledging fidelity to the league and to league members on Zooms while side texting about leaving for other leagues. Seriously. Commissioners are chatting about potential deals among one another and privately crunching the numbers with consultants to poach the other's members. Conference allegiance these days comes with all the romance and permanence of a Tinder swipe. It's, that's so well versed. It's true. Yeah. You got multiple conversations going on. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. Actually, uh, we're going to do this. Even this morning with the Pac 12 going, guys, everyone, we're working on a new TV deal. And then every, and then half the league's talking to the Big 12 about coming over. What in the What's yeah, happening right what, now? What new TV deal? Hey, there's a poll out in the Kansas City Star as to uh, which teams the Big 12 should invite from okay. the Pac 12. Arizona okay. State. And Arizona up big, 66%, 60% for Arizona, Oregon at 56 Colorado has jumped over Utah, okay. 54% to 51%. Okay. Now Washington's, uh, Washington's number five at 51%, right? Yeah, yeah. And then Utah is down to 44%. The Utes were at 57%. Before a BYU fan site <laughs> tweeted out the link, and now here comes everybody else. Uh, you gotta love Cougar Nation, but that's out of the Kansas City Star, and and uh, if all those things are happening that Dennis Dodd said um, today, uh, this afternoon could be really interesting. Um, and our, our writer from the from Tulsa yeah, talked about it. Oh, it doesn't have to be to this afternoon. Maybe it's late this later this week. Maybe it's later in the year. You know, we're still talking about there's no movement till 24, but there's this feeling that we got to do something right now. Yeah. And if we're not doing it right now, we're falling behind. It's as simple as this. Big Ten and SEC, $100 million per school with their new TV rights. Uh, the rest are at about 35 to $40 million. How do you get that number higher if you're the Big 12, up to around 50 or $60 million per school? And we believe it's adding at least four, maybe six teams from the Pac-12. You know, it was never fair. Those two leagues were always getting more. Sure. Uh, so that didn't change. Now they're just going to get a lot more. You're just trying to maintain some, some close, some type of financial proximity. Yeah. Whew. Coming up, your elite voice and a patriotic rise and shout out. Yes, and uh, to honor USC and UCLA on Top 5 Tuesday for leaving for the Big Ten, we present the Top 5 BYU wins over USC and UCLA. <laughs> That's what we do. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> this portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. tell you a story. The human eye is drawn to light. We can't help it. It just happens. How do you plead? For mercy. If you want to be inspired, you got to show up with a willingness to be inspired. It allows that searching part of me to kind of come forward. Last call for Mallory Towers! And even when things don't go as planned, we can still have hope. I want to know that I've made a difference. Oh man, I'm so proud of you. It's like a medicine almost. It's, it's powerful. You have to at least try. I just knew that it was season ending. A shot at a goal! Ellie Vaughn! My heart is so full. Ask 
cool. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform and please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Thanks to the latest college football conference realignment shockwave, witnessing USC and UCLA leave the Pac-12 for the Big Ten and take their L.A. money with them to the Big Ten conference and their media negotiations. Well, we feel like it's only appropriate that we look back on the top five BYU football wins against USC and UCLA <laughs> to say thanks to the Trojans and Bruins. Top five Tuesday presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Number five, last year's game at USC. Cougars came in ranked 13th in the country, 4-0 against the Pac-12, and beat them again, 35-31, to giving them the de facto South Division Championship. I yep. believe there was a banner here. Mm -hmm. Big win. That was the Pac-12 South clincher. It was huge. And BYU's doing it with the walking wounded in large part. At number four, 2019, USC in Provo. The Trojans were ranked 24th that day, only to fall to Zach Wilson and company, 30-27 to in overtime. Fans actually stormed the field twice that day, once after Diane Gawoluku's diving interception, then once again after the referees cleared the field to review the play, only to confirm the interception was good and the game was over. Plus, it was like 150 degrees down there. Oh. Quite a day. Let's go to number three, 2007 win over UCLA in the Vegas Bowl. The Bruins beat them by 10 earlier in the year. Max Hall gets the Cougars into the end zone, comes down to a blocked field goal. Ethan Manumaliuna blocks the game-winning field goal, and UCLA had a kicker that just doesn't miss. There's the block. Cougars yep. win 17-16. At number two, 59 nothing. Enough said. BYU destroyed the Bruins that day at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Austin Colley, Harvey Unga, Dennis Pitt, and Maxall all went nuts. Number one. Nothing. 1983, BYU beats UCLA in the Rose Bowl. Steve Young, 270, two touchdowns. Casey Tiamalu averaged eight yards a carry, 37-35. Cougs win in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, those were the defending Rose or the eventual Rose Bowl champion, UCLA yeah, Bruins. That's a good one. That might have been the last time they were actually relevant. I think you're right. <laughs> if you were the commissioner of the Big 12, what's your next move? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Mr. Nate Dogg on Instagram says, with Kalani at the helm, I want every piece of Utah every year. Today's Rise of Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. America, happy 4th of July. That's an awesome shirt. Thank you. Our thanks to today's guest, Garen Emig. Conversation continues 24-7, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Go Cougs. See you tomorrow.